Hi and welcome to today's Prime Time News Package. I am Alian Christopher. Here's a look at the headlines for today. Prime Minister Skerritt says DASPA shall not negotiate with a gun to its head after employees threaten to take strike. Leader of the opposition says Creed is not legally established. And health alert raised in St. Lucia after four suspicious deaths. Stay tuned for these and other stories right here on CBN4. We'll be right back. Lani Sim Tupatu, attention si vous êtes nom et befa. Visitez la santé pour examiner le corps. Ça c'est un nid pour vous voir si l'année pièce moun au limon qui ni maladie TB et ben maladie sexuelle. En compagnie moun qui ni maladie HIV, peni TB aussi. Sauf qui l'année guérison pour TB. Ou sa vive en bonne santé même si ou ni maladie HIV. Parlez by docteur ou. Pour responsabilité ou. Aidez du bout de simé maladie TB et HIV. Ou agez tout le monde pour examiner le corps. If you're HIV positive or have an STI, having unprotected sex with multiple partners puts them in grave danger. You'll expose every partner and their present and future partners to HIV or another STI. Use a condom every time you have sex. You can live a productive life even if diagnosed with HIV. Remember, early detection is key to your survival. Be responsible, protect yourself and others. Help stop the spread of HIV and other STIs. And welcome back to CBN 4's Primetime News Package. First up, Prime Minister of Dominica, Roosevelt Skerritt, has made it abundantly clear to DASPA workers that DASPA shall not negotiate with a gun to its head. Dominica Air and Seaport Authority employees earlier on Friday morning took strike action on matters relating to salary negotiations. The Prime Minister said, There shall be no salary negotiations at any level while workers are out on an illegal industrial action. Skerritt said the country hasn't been collecting major taxes since the passage of Hurricane Maria. During a short briefing at the office of the Prime Minister, he asked, how can anyone expect there to be salary negotiations of any kind with the country's tax revenue dramatically affected? Where is the country supposed to find salary increases when no taxes are being collected? and hundreds of private sector workers have lost their jobs. This is very selfish and self-serving of the DASPA workers. You want salary increase when, and when not all wards at the PMH are functional and with some in urgent need of equipment? You want salary increase when farmers are still struggling to get their lands cleared plowed and planted? You want salary increase when we are still struggling to settle the island's children back in schools? You want salary increase when hundreds of Dominicans are still without a roof over their heads? You want salary increase at a time when people are asking us to renew the duty-free concessions? Where is government or DASPA is supposed to get the money you're asking for? You want salary increases when tourist vendors have not earned a dollar for the season? You want salary increase when every single Dominican has been raising questions about the efficiency or lack thereof at the port in clearing their goods to restart their businesses and to fix their homes and to regularize their lives? Are DASPA staff not aware that DASPA has been using monies from insurance payouts? to meet salary payments since the hurricane 
Maria? Skerritt continued by saying that the port's revenue has dropped by 30%. Is the DASPA staff aware that DASPA so suffered $51 million of losses and damages as a result of Hurricane Maria? Who really is behind this industrial action? I hope it is not who I suspect it is. I hope the workers are not once again being used like puppets in a silly, selfish game. DASPA shall hold discussions. The Prime Minister firmly indicated that DASPA shall hold discussions when people are back to work and when people are prepared to discuss their concerns and other concerns in a mutually respectful and civil manner. The Prime Minister said until such time, DASPA will not hold discussions with people on strike. Meantime, the General Secretary of the Dominica Public Service Union, Thomas Leta, indicated that focus is being placed on the lack of importance that is being placed on negotiation and the fact that DASPA employees have not received a salary increase for a number of years. We want something to be done. And we, as I said, we have other issues which we want to address. So whatever Simeon and the others say, that is your business. We don't bother with them. We are going to respond to them. They can get lost. Thank General Secretary of the Dominica Public Service Union, Thomas Leta. Meantime, President of the Dominica Consumer Protection Association, Cleville Mill, says that Consumer Protection Day is observed every year. He says that is the day that is organized by the Consumer International. According to Mills, there are a set of processes and regulations that must be met to be affiliated with the Consumer International. Mills revealed that the Dominica Association has been incorporated, but there are still more that needs to be done to be fully functional. So they would send out information and guidelines so that we can have activities for Consumer Protection Day or a week. This, this, um, this, this, this year, um, Consumer International, the, the theme for, for, for Consumer Day is making digital, digital marketplace fairer. And that is what we are seeking to He further stated that as far as consumer rights is concerned, the Dominica Consumer Association recognizes that the role of the association is to look about the interests of the consumers. Mill says that consumers must be knowledgeable of their rights. Of, of, of consumers. We want to know, let them know that um, they have rights to safe products, they have right to redress, and they have right to have all the information that is necessary to make a determination in the purchase of any product or service. So he recognizes that the issue of price control is one that normally surfaces, an issue that the association may need to tackle. According to Mills, there are two ways in which those issues are addressed. Mm. On the question of price control matters, right? There are two ways that it can be done. First of all, government can through legislation has certain items on uh, um, on the price control list and those items that they have to be sold at a certain price or there's also provision that they can only have a, a maximum markup based on the cost of bringing the, the product into into the country and that can be legislated and it can be enforced by law the other aspect of it is uh, if you have a very vibrant and, and organized consumer protection association the members can be so organized that their voices and their conduct can help influence the prices and any matters dealing with the consumer right on, on the island. So for our part, while there is not sufficient legislation to really enforce it according to law, we can as an advocacy group, as a pressure group to a certain extent, seek to make representation on the, on the behalf of consumers. And that representation would maybe lead to government. The president of the Dominica Consumer Protection Association revealed that there are only two items that are controlled by consumer protection laws, that is LPG gas and cement. According to Mills, 
in the absence of legislation, it would depend on the strengthening of the association, how organized they are, and how much belief they have in their rights to tackle the problem of price gouging. And stay tuned, we'll be back with more news right after this break. There are signs everywhere. Pay attention whether you're male or female. Visit your health center to get screened. It's a preliminary test to determine if you are exposed to the HIV virus, an STI, or tuberculosis. Some people who are HIV positive also have tuberculosis. But there is hope. Tuberculosis can be cured. And yes, you can live a full life with HIV. Talk to your doctor. Be responsible. Help stop the spread of TB, HIV. Encourage everyone to get tested. Les monde qui ni tibi estené et ben tout c'est monde qui en bonne santé au li ouin ka respire ces vermin là monde qui pas ni bon tempérament comme ça qui ni maladie HIV alcool caféine ti mama e grand monde bien sensible pour ces maladies ça monde qui ka tout c'est ni pour prendre précaution les yo en parmi monde en place publique couvert bouche ou les ka estené tout c'est visiter docteur et ben place santé fini tout traitement yo ba ou pour ça joindre guérison et puis maladie tibi en responsabilité ou aider tout bout Simen maladie TB et HIV. Protégez Kou et les autres. And welcome back. Do you remember being a child and being encouraged by your parents to start or always do something constructive? Whether it is to read a book or to write a story or even make a collection of 10 cents and 5 cents or even bottle tops? Well, a student of the Ebenezer Primary School, Kelly Flora, did not have to be told to start a collection. So what's so interesting about a collection that CBN4 just couldn't resist? After the passage of Hurricane Maria, Kelly Flora says that she noticed that there were an abundance of water bottles, her home having received some as part of relief efforts. She said that she decided to collect all the water labels she could find that were being brought to Dominica as part of her collection. CBN4's reporter, Fernie James, conducted the interview with the impressively bright young lady, and here's what she had to say. And, uh as you were collecting them, something else came to your mind? Yes. Mm -hmm. To stick them in a book. To create a book? Yeah. What did you think of your book idea at the time? I think that it was lame. And it did not have no decoration. Like, when you know when you just buy a new book, that's how it looked. But when you open it, you just saw water labels. So my mother said, why don't we decorate it? So we decorated it. We numbered our labels. And then we wrote the name of each label that we had. I thought that I could keep it and take care of it so that I could show to my classmates and keep it as a souvenir for if I have any future children that I can show and tell the story of Maria and then they can see the different waters that we got. So have you taken it to your school? Well yes I have taken it to my school already. And um, what was the reaction from your classmates? They were like how you get all that labels? I don't even have half of that at my home and then my teachers were like you have to go and put that book on news and so beautifully done now we're not the only ones who heard about Kelly's bright idea the convent preparatory school will also be showcasing her work as part of an exhibition on wednesday the 21st of march News Dion Henderson, acting director of the Alliance Francaise, says that the month of March is Francophonie Month. 
Dion laments that this year's observance will not be celebrated as in other years because of the effects of Hurricane Maria. However, Henderson revealed that the Alliance for Sales will be teaming up with the Ministry of Culture and Education to host a few activities. Activities. One of them is Cine uh, Rule, which is a Roman cinema uh, from Guadeloupe that we got to Dominica uh, on Sunday, and for the whole week they will be visiting schools and projecting a movie, a French movie, which is subtitled in English for the children. Um, they'll be going all over the island, starting on, Mo on we starting Monday with Portsmouth. Um, today was Massac and uh, uh, Saint Martin's Primary. Tomorrow it will be uh, Grand Bay and the Kalinago Territory on, on Thursday. And on the 23rd of this month, we also having a play by um, Saint Mary's Primary here at um, uh, our premises. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. But we know that it's going to be on, on Friday the 23rd. Henderson further stated that the Alliance Francaise will also be teaming up with the Ministry of Education to award meritorious French students. He went on to say that this year's focus is promoting more cultural events and activities. Um, around music, around art, around... Um, uh, the whole idea is to make, transform the Alliance Française into a cultural center where we will do really more of those, propose more cultural events um, and, you know, make um, the public be, you know, discover different and, and foreign and, you know, the, the, you know, a little more diverse and more variety when it comes to... to, to Henderson revealed that as part of Francophonie Month, an animated movie was played for the students of two schools. He says the movie really seemed to have captivated their attention. According to Henderson, the Alliance for Sales is hoping to implement more of these activities as part of Francophonie Month. And also in the news, five beautiful young ladies will vie for the coveted title of Dominica's 41st annual Miss Teen Pageant on April 14, 2018 at the Old Mill Cultural Center. The director of the Whitey Kubule Dance Theater, Raymond Lawrence, said that, that despite of Hurricane Maria and its negative impact, he is grateful that the teen pageant is still standing. Lawrence said the teen pageant is mainly about youth talent and youth dreams. It's of talent and skill of our young people and it's a wonderful opportunity for the youth of Dominica to shine. It helps the young girls develop their speaking, modeling, and performing skills. And it also helps them to develop their sense of self-confidence and self-esteem. The director of the White Sokobole Dance Theatre noted that the teen pageant is a stepping stone for young girls to go on to bigger pageants if they so desire. The five young ladies participating in this year's pageant are as follows. Contestant number one, Cyan Davis of the Goodwill Secondary School. Contestant number two, Dana Granu of the Casabru Secondary School. Contestant number three, Elisa James, representing the Adolescence Skills Training Program of the Social Center. Contestant number four is Georgiana Albert, representing the 160-year-old Convent High School. And Nzinga Collier, representing the Portsmouth Secondary School as contestant number five. Here before you stand Cyan Davis, a far from student and proud representative of the Goodwill Secondary School. My participation in this competition has been made possible thus far by Shirstar Entertainment, L&O Guest House, Restaurant and Bar. I want to extend an invitation to all of you to come down at the Old Mill Cultural Center on April 14th where you will witness the rise of the phoenix. I thank you. Good evening to everyone and welcome. Standing before you is 15 year old Dana Grano, an industrious student from the Castlebury Secondary School. I invite you to come out and support 
my four sisters and I on the 14th of April 2018 right here at the Old Mill. Mark that date, for it will be a grand affair to remember. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am responsible, caring, 17-year-old Elisa James from the Kalanago Territory. I will be representing the Adolescent Skills Training Program of the Social Center. In the Adolescent Skills Training Program, we train young adults in the area of attainment, preparing them for employment. I'm inviting you all to come, come down to the all new cultural center on April 14th to witness talent and skills from me and these beautiful young ladies. I thank you. I am 15 year old Georgiana Albert, this year's representative of the 160 year old Convent High School. I am currently a third form student and study 13 subjects of which mathematics is my favorite. Being born and bred in the tranquil community of Loda has allowed me to experience and embrace serenity and foster a love for the art of cooking. I am sponsored by the CHS Foundation, Tuju Hospital where everything is always high fashion, and the Sunflower Bakery. Tonight, I remind you that you are all invited to the teenage pageant on April 14th at the Old Mill Cultural Center to come see me as I whip up an appetite to tantalize your taste buds. Thank you. I am 16 year old and Singaporean and it is my pleasure to be here. Who would have ever thought that after such a time of resilience and distraught that Miss Team Dominica 2018 would still be a success to showcase beauty through intelligence and a strong message nonetheless. Let me harness the opportunity to say I'll extend to you an invitation to view us in a unique display. Take a moment and think of this. April 14th at 5 p.m. you won't want to miss. Come support me and Zynga at the Omi Cultural Center because on that night, hey, come Jasta. This event will be held under the theme celebrating the talents of our youth. Leader of the opposition, Lennox Linton, says there is no problem with the idea of an independent agency to lead and manage climate resilient development of Dominica, but, however, states the Climate Resilience Executive Agency of Dominica, Creed, has not been legally established. Linton confirmed that members of the parliamentary opposition were invited to the launching of the Creed on the 19th, on the 9th sorry, of March. He said the members of the opposition felt that the announcement of Creed in New York at the pledging conference of the UNDP and CARICOM for hurricane-affected islands that the Prime Minister was at the time launching the idea of an independent agency for the climate resilient development of Dominica. Four months later, not having issued a white paper, not having presented a bill to the parliament for consideration and for enactment, to say that you're launching the creed, we were not sure what is it the prime minister or the government was doing. And in fact, even after the launching, we still do not have a legal body. So we are asking very simply, is there supposed to be another launching when creed really becomes an entity because right now it's an idea linton further mentioned that the opposition did not understand why the prime minister was taking this route until it was announced at the launch he said the setting up of creed as a department in the prime minister's office is indeed wrong and the contrary to good governance do the right thing of setting creed up as a statutory corporation right now give it the lawful constitution and legal authority right off the bat consistent with the rule of law principles and protocols of parliamentary governance the prime minister is setting up creed as a department in his office and later will have it established as a, a statutory corporation we think that is wrong 
we think that is contrary to the principles of good governance. It uh, is very disrespectful of the oversight responsibility that Parliament has for the governance of the country. And um, we, we think that the Prime Minister has enough opportunity right now to change course and, and not go through this intermediate stage where he will effectively be forming creed in his own image and likeness, hiring who he wants, doing what he wants with it, and it seems when he's happy with it politically, then he will have the parliament, he will come to ask the parliament, use the, the government's majority in the parliament to have it rubber stamped as a statutory corporation. We think that's wrong. We think that does not send a good message for the international community, especially the, the countries that are willing to help us um, with our climate resilient development. We need to show that we are more accountable, we're more transparent in that, and we in fact have the discipline for the good governance that they expect us to have in, in the course of managing resources they'll put in our, at our disposal for the climate resilient development of Dominica. So. The opposition leader also indicated that the members of parliament, the higher decision making body in the country, need to deliberate on the setting up of creed. He said the rule of law protocols in this parliamentary democracy requires that as statutory cooperation, creed is required to have legal status and can only gain legal status from an act of parliament. Clinton said the opposition wants to be included in the implementation of creed and to also have their inputs as it relates to giving out ideas on how the creed could be set up differently.